come and wave your hands and begin to thank Jesus Christ. Come and wave your hands and begin to thank him. Thank him, thank him. Thank him for overcoming for us. Thank him for interceding for us before the Father. Come on, thank him, thank him, thank him. You know, there are many people on the sick bed right now, unable to move without being helped. Here we are moving freely. Come on, thank him. Thank him. That accident, that headache, that poison that you and I survived. There are many people who couldn't survive it. Come and wave your hands and begin to thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Acknowledge him. Tell your neighbor, acknowledge God. Say, acknowledge God. For every moment of his attention in your life. Come and begin to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yes, you may be seated in the presence of God and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. We are in the presence of God today to make a difference in our world. By with a difference, I mean carrying God along. I want to begin with you this morning by sharing with you my encounter with a lady. And this will lead us to our message today. A few months ago, I met a young lady who believes she can go it all alone without any reference to God. She believes so much in externals, her beauty, the amount of money she owns in her bank accounts, the car she drives. You know, I try my possible best to let her understand the true meaning of life and the importance of looking inwards. But I realize that the more I talk, the more beaten she looked. You know, she was not willing to listen to the truth. She was no longer giving me that attention. So, I asked her, I said, sister, where is your house? Immediately, our countenance changed with a big smile. And she said to me, oh, evangelist, I will be very glad if you can come to know my house. I live on Banana Island, one of the most prestigious areas in Lagos, a mansion with my family. And I said, wow, so you are not homeless. She changed again and said, I think you're not getting me. She looked at me with this kind of weighed look, you know. You're not getting me. I said, I own properties, businesses. I'm at the peak of my career. Hmm. Children of God, I want you to know one thing today. You can be rich famous or popular 
and yet homeless. You can be highly educated. You can be at the peak of your career and yet homeless. You can be a bishop, a pastor, an evangelist. You can own the largest congregation with several branches and yet homeless. You know, homelessness is a man's condition without God. Homelessness is a man's condition without God. We are homeless unless the spirit of the Father dwells in us. And that is why Jesus says in John 14 verse 23, that if anyone loves me, he must obey my teaching. My father will love him. And we will come and have our home in him. That you are not obeying the word of God does not mean you cannot be rich. That you are not obeying the word of God, brethren, does not mean you cannot be well educated. That you are not obeying the word of God does not mean you cannot control the largest crowd. Today many think that the evidence of God in our life is the fact that we are rich. Many things that the evidence of God in their lives is the fact that they are famous, popular, highly educated. Capital no. Remember, a man can be poor and yet be a best friend of God. A man can be rejected, disappointed, denied the right to belong, and yet be the apple of God's eye. Whereas, a man can be rich, very, very rich, and yet do not have a relationship with God. Think about this. Remember, what makes us what we are is not the results, but the right processing. It's not about the results, but going through the right processing. There are many rich men, but there is a rich man. Anyone can be rich. Anyone can be rich. What makes the difference is the right processing. I mean, of whom you are the source. And that is why we see many people with poor results having good jobs. Whereas there are many first class graduates looking to get a job. That is why we will see the most so-called ugly people getting married to the most beautiful and handsome people without stress. Whereas, there are many beautiful and handsome people who are struggling to get someone to settle down with. Indeed, what makes us what we are matters most. Tell your neighbor, what makes us what we are? What makes you what you are? 
matters most. And this will bring me to the title of this message. Right processing makes the difference. Tell your neighbor, right processing. Right processing makes the difference. Just like you have the right ingredients, just as right ingredients make up a good soup. So also, right processing makes the difference. Now ask yourself, what is the process of your life? I mean, how did you become what you are? Ask yourself, how did I become what I am? Who are you? What are you? Are you a business person? How you became that business person of today? matters most. Are you a minister? How you became a minister will determine how effective you will be in the face of adversity. Are you a politician? How you became a politician will determine how you will keep your campaign promises to your people. I mean, the right processing. Whatever profession you may be, people of God, how you became it will determine how long you will last. And how you will be rewarded. How you became what you are will determine how long you will last. And how much you will be rewarded. Tell your neighbor processing makes a difference. Now let's quickly turn our Bible to the book of Romans chapter 8. And let's quickly take our reading from verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 8. And let us begin from verse 1. Are you there? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let's go to verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for all of us, how shall he not with him also freely give all things? Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or parole, or sword. Verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus 
our Lord. Amen. What can separate you from the love of Christ? I mean, what can separate us from the love of God? You do pray all the time. You do pray all the time. Can anything stop you from praying all the time? You go to church. What can separate you from going to church? What can separate you from praying? Now think about what are the process that you went through to be here today. Don't forget that your coming here is not a day journey. Should I go or not? Why many choose to seek the face of God, to know the truth? Many sought the ideals of men before coming. No, I can't go. God says go. But man says don't. Many of us are here today because of relationship. Ask yourself, what is the reason why I'm here today? I mean, the right processing. I want to share with you two practical examples of things that happen to us in the presence of God and we don't take cognizance about. We don't take notice of them. Now, when we come to the house of God, let me take an example of a woman coming to the house of God. And as soon as she enters the gates, you know, the usher, their job is to move close and say, Mommy, can you sit here? Now, I want to take note of these actions and reaction. Now, an usher approach a woman, kindly sit here. This is an usher, mommy sit here. And you see the reaction of this woman, sit where? No, mommy, here. Sit where, where? No, mommy, he's here. Me, sit here? Why can't I sit here? No, mommy, that place is full. No, I want to sit where the man of God will see me. You can tell me where to sit and where not to sit. Oh, mommy, please, that place is full. If you can just sit here. Oh, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. People of God, the way we react determine our processing, our attitude depends on our processing. You know I said that a lot of things that we do that we don't take note of them, but it matters most. Now let me give you another example. You see a man making a call while the service is going on, and you hear him saying, oh, minister, hello, how are you all fine? I should come to Abuja tomorrow? Wow, I'm going to be there first twice tomorrow morning to sign a million dollar contract? Wow! And because the usher noticed that people around him were being distracted, and the usher comes and says, sorry sir, if you can just move out there and make your call, because people around you, they are distracted. You see, I should go out there? Make my call? Huh. Do you know whom I was talking to? I was setting a million dollars contract. This money is enough to pay your salary for the rest of your life. And those that you claim are complaining. By the way, who are you? Osha, or what? Or what? Whom we are 
depends on our processing. How we became what we are depends on our processing. Like an adage in my mother tongue, Yoruba, says, I will tell you the meaning. <laughs> the meaning is, we must make pounding before we can have a pounded yam. I mean, the way we pound determine the kind of pounded yam you will have. I mean, the processing of your pounding will determine how the result of your pounded yam will come out. If our processing is in line with God, nothing can separate us from the love of God. If our processing, when your processing is in line with God, nothing can separate you from the love of God. But you know, everyone wants to be great. But not everyone wants to go through the right processing. We want to be blessed. We want to have breakthrough. We want to be healed. But how many people are willing to go through the right processing? Today, when we are looking for a role model, we are tempted to look only at externals, the beauty, the position, popularity, name them. And therefore, we begin to compare ourselves to others. But we fail to realize that one can be rich and yet not have a right standing with God. The book of John chapter 14, verse 27 says, the blessings God gives, not as the world gives. The riches, popularity, handsomeness, wealth that God gives, not as the world gives them. You know, today, people bother so much about their cup being our full. A lot of people bothered about their cup being half empty. But I fail to realize that the cup itself is refillable. You know, we don't seem to understand the fact that every year, two million people died of dehydration. So it doesn't matter whether your cup is half full or half empty. The most important thing is there is water in your cup. So, the blessings that God gives is not as the world gives them. The way and manner we process our lives, brethren, is what is working for or against us. You think about how you have been processing your life. You want to get married. What is the processing of your marriage? Is it in line with God? Did you pray about it? Are you sure you are here clearly from God? or you are not being influenced by external factors. If your marriage 
is in line with God, your marriage will stand the test of time. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing, absolutely nothing. If God's processing is followed, we all know if we want to make a right soup, what do we need to do? We need to put together right ingredients. And you know, quickly, let me just share with you an experience I had about two years ago. Two years ago, a family of mine invited me to their house to have a dinner. And you know, I've been longing to have this meeting with them. And I said, I'm going to keep myself for seven hours. I'm going to fast just for me to prepare myself to eat this food because I just want to be with them. They are family friend of mine. So I went to their house and we were seated waiting to eat the dinner. So the wife came and, you know, I was there with the husband, the children, and the wife came and she began to serve the food. I was desperately hungry, to be honest, waiting to eat the food. As soon as I took the four spoon, the taste was really, really bad. I mean, very bad. The food tasted bad. I was like, no. Could it be because I've not taken something for the past eight hours? No. I never knew the husband and the children were staring at me. I never knew. But I was like, no. Let me give a benefit, a benefit of doubt. Let me take another spoon to know what is happening. I took the second spoon. Believe you me, the food tasted horrible, tasted bad. And I was like, what is happening? And here comes the woman with a big smile. Oh, sister, do you enjoy the food? I was like, enjoy the food? And the husband was serious, looking at me. I said, what will happen here today? I don't know what to say. Oh, sister, you enjoy the food? Oh. I said, sister, you know what? This food tastes bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 it tastes horrible. Immediately, the husband banged on the table and said, sister, you are one of the very many guests that we had in this house. But I tell you, you are the only person that will look straight to my wife and tell her the gospel truth. I was like, really? She said, yes. For a very long time, my wife has been cooking very, very bad food. But she wouldn't listen. Even my children, they have vowed that they're not going to eat mommy's food. I was like, what is happening here? Then this man faced the husband's wife and said, look, my dear, I'm not going to eat your food anymore if you don't change the ingredients you put together that brings about this. I'm not going to eat your food anymore. I was like, you know what happened? I noticed that it was not that the woman was not a good cook. She indeed is a good cook, but she was putting the wrong ingredients together. And as a result, she was losing the flavor. She was not getting the right seasoning. I believe we have many chefs in the house who can agree with me that if you put the right ingredients together, you'll be astonished by the outcome. And such, the way and manner we process our lives determine the kind of life we will enjoy. The way and manner we process our lives determine the kind of life we enjoy. Now, let's come back to our message. Are you a business person? Are you a leader? Are you a minister? 
A minister once told me the strength of his ministry. He listed the branches he has all over the world. And I began to ask myself, does it mean ministries is all about the branches that we have? Does it mean that the church is all about the numbers of the ministries, branches that we have all over the world? Let us not forget that the apostles of the old made a difference in their world. They paid a supreme price to bring this gospel to all of us. If what we called our strength is their own idea of strength, it means they had no strength at all. We read about many prophets of the old, God's genera. We read about them. Where are their branches today? Where are their ministries? They never build structures, but they build souls, human capacity. They build souls, human capacity. Are you talking about Moses and Joshua? Are you talking about Elijah and Elisha? And the rest of others. Until we begin to build people, only then will our ministries outlive us. Until we begin to build people, only then will our ministry outlive us for the generation yet unborn. Until then, to be a Christian, to be a believer, to be a child of God, we must be ready to follow right processing. We must be ready to do what? To follow the right processing. How you become a Christian determines the kind of Christian you are. How we have been living our lives before God will determine how God will manifest himself in our lives today. It is not about makeup, dressing up, reading the word of God without acting on it. And then come to our midst as many will think. No. The way and manner we have been living in the presence of God before today will determine how God will greatly manifest himself in our lives. Nevertheless, it is not the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his grace. There is another adage in my mother tongue that says, any damn stewardship, I tell it you too. Meaning, he who wets the ground ahead of him will walk on a cool ground. In other words, as you lay your bed, you what? You lie on it. There are most of us who are an imitator of man. And that is why many people cannot live above human destruction. There are many copy of man, an imitator of man. Do you mean to dance? Do you mean to smile? I mean, do you mean to greet? Do you mean to pray? Or you are praying because you see your neighbor praying? Do you mean to say amen? 
or you are saying amen because the man of God asked you to say amen? Did you mean to come here today? Or you are here today because you want to impress your boss, your manager? Are you here today? Maybe you are forced by your sister, your mother, your brother? What we do seems not to be the testimony of our conscience. What we do seems not to be the testimony of our conscience. That is why you see the word as it is today. That is why our businesses, our relationship, our finances, our marriage, are what they are today. If you listen to the testimony of your conscience, no weapon that fashioned against you shall prosper. You must be ready to begin to listen to the testimony of your conscience. If you don't listen to the testimony of your conscience by examining everything in the light of God's word, don't forget that people today can pretend to be good. People can pretend to be truthful. They can pretend to have good reputation. Whereas their life does not testify of their confession. But don't forget when Christ will come to inquire of true believers, the question will not be, who lives in a mansion? The question will not be, who owns the largest congregation? When Christ shall come to inquire of a true believer, the question will not be, who is a pastor, a prophet, a general overseer? But the question will be, who worship in spirit and in truth? For if be not in spirit, it is not in truth. And so, it is done nothing. Brethren, how we live our lives as a Christian, determines whom we are in the hand of God. Now finally, brethren, let us hear what Psalmist has to say in the book of Psalm 37. And let's take the reading quickly from verse 6. The book of Psalm 37 and let us take this reading from verse 6. Psalm 37, verse 6. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the new day, if you follow the right processing. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Brethren, no matter how much we master the scriptures, without true obedience to what you read, that I read, we will still be wearing a spiritual diapers. 
Many so-called Christians today are struggling with a maturity that comes from faith because of their ignorance in the things of the Spirit. Allow God to talk to you. Allow God to talk to you. Listen to your conscience. Examine everything you hear, you see, you read in the light of God's word. By doing this, you will eat the good fruits the land produces. If you have been following the right processing and you have not yet seen the results, don't worry. God may be taking his time to prepare you, enable you, equip you for the journey ahead. You're about to receive the mother of all blessings. God is preparing you for something greater. Something greater than what you are saying. Something greater than your situation. So be patient. Because God will still have to mark your work. Brethren, be patient. Be patient because God will still have to mark your work. He will mark your work. For those who are under the influence of my voice, this message is challenging you to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Every other thing, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, riches, wealth, position and possession will be added unto you. May the Lord bless his words in the midst of our hearts in Jesus' name.